You need to hear this if you're a problem solver. I'm Pankaj Sharma and today I am your guide through the world of FMEA. FMEA stands for Failure Mode and Effects Analysis. That sounds like a big complicated thing, doesn't it? But it's really quite simple. It's a way of thinking ahead. It helps us look at a process or a product and ask what could possibly go wrong here. We all do this in our daily lives, maybe without even realizing it. When you grab an umbrella before leaving the house on a cloudy day, you are thinking about a possible failure, getting wet from unexpected rain. You are doing a tiny personal FMEA. It's a proactive tool, meaning we use it a problem happens, not after. The main purpose of FMEA is to find potential problems early. By finding them early, we can prevent them from happening at all. Or, if we can't prevent them, we can at least make them less serious. Think of it like a safety checklist for a rocket launch. Scientists and engineers don't just build a rocket and hope for the best. They think about every single part and every single step. They ask, what if this bolt comes loose or what if this fuel pump fails? This careful thinking is what makes complex things like space travel possible and safer. FMEA gives us a structured way to do that kind of careful forward-looking analysis. So, FMEA is not just for rocket scientists. It can be used for almost anything. You could use it to plan a birthday party, design a new smartphone, or improve a process at a hospital. The failure mode is the way something could fail. The effects are the consequences of that failure. And the analysis is the part where we study these things and decide what to do about them. It's a team sport, often involving people with different perspectives working together to brainstorm all the possibilities. This collaboration makes the final uh, plan much stronger and more robust. This method helps us prioritize. Not all potential problems are created equal. A burnt piece of toast is an annoying failure, but a car's brakes failing is a catastrophic one. FMEA helps us figure out which risks are the biggest and most important to fix first. It gives us a system to rate each potential failure based on how likely it is to happen, how bad the consequences would be, and how easy it is to detect before it causes harm. This way, we can focus our time, energy, and resources on the things that matter most. Consider it. Science is all about observing and predicting and FMEA is a tool that helps us do just that. The FMEA process is like following a recipe. If you follow the steps, you get a consistent and useful result. The first step is to identify the process or product you want to analyze. Let's say we want to analyze the process of driving a car to work. We need to break it down into smaller steps, like starting the car, pulling out of the driveway, driving on the highway, and parking. By breaking it down, we can examine each part carefully. You can't analyze driving as one giant thing. You need to look at the individual actions that make up the whole journey. This sets the stage for everything that follows. Next, for each step, we brainstorm potential failure modes. This is where we ask, how could this step go wrong? For the step driving on the highway, a failure mode could be getting a flat tire. Another one could be running out of gasoline. Another could be the engine overheating. We try to list as many potential failures as we can think of. It's important to be creative and thorough here. No idea is a bad idea during this brainstorming phase. The more potential failures we can identify, the better prepared we will be to handle them. After listing the failure modes, we think about the effects of each failure. What happens if this failure occurs? If we get a flat tire on the highway, the effects could be losing control of the car, causing an accident, being late for work, or getting stuck on the side of the road. We write down all these consequences. Then we think about the potential causes of the failure. What could cause a flat tire? It could be a nail on the road, an old and worn out tire, or incorrect tire pressure. 
Understanding the root cause is crucial for finding an effective solution. Finally, we score each potential failure and make a plan. We give each failure a score for severity, how bad is the effect, occurrence, how likely is it to happen, and detection, how easy is it to spot before it happens. We multiply these three numbers to get a risk priority number or RPN. A high RPN means it's a high risk problem that we need to address right away. For the high risk items, we create an action plan. For the flat tire, our plan might be to check tire pressure weekly and replace tires every five years. Then we do it. And that, my friends, is how science helps us improve our world. Let's apply this FMEA process to something we do every day, making toast. It seems simple, but even simple things can fail. Our process is making toast with a pop-up toaster. The steps are 1. Get bread. 2. Put bread in the toaster. 3. Set the darkness level. 4. Press the lever down. 5. Wait for the toast to pop up. 6. Remove the toast. Now, let's pick one of those steps to analyze. Let's focus on step 4. Press the lever down. It seems like nothing could go wrong here. But let's think like scientists. What are the potential failure modes for this step? One failure mode could be that the lever doesn't stay down. You push it and it just pops right back up. The toaster doesn't start heating. What is the effect of this failure? Well, the immediate effect is no toast. You end up with just a plain slice of bread. You might feel frustrated and hungry. You might be late for school or work because your breakfast is delayed. These are the consequences of the failure. It's not life-threatening, but it is an inconvenience that disrupts your morning routine. Now let's think about the potential causes of this failure. Why wouldn't the lever stay down? One cause could be that the toaster isn't plugged into the wall outlet. Many toasters have a safety feature that prevents them from starting if there's no power. Another cause could be a broken internal mechanism, like the electromagnet that is supposed to hold the lever in place. A third cause could be that there's a crumb stuck in the mechanism, physically blocking it from locking. Identifying these different causes is key to figuring out how to solve the problem. Finally, we assess the risk and create a plan. The severity of no toast is low, let's say a 2 out of 10. The occurrence of the toaster being unplugged might be moderate, maybe a 4 out of 10. But the detection, the detection is very high. You know immediately that it failed. Based on this, we can create a simple action plan. Our recommended action could be to always check that the toaster is plugged in before use. For the potential of a broken mechanism, our action might be to buy a more reliable toaster next time or to clean out the crumb tray regularly. See, FME helps us solve problems even in the kitchen. In the end, FEME is more than just a fancy acronym or a series of steps on a chart. It is a powerful way of thinking. It trains your brain to be proactive instead of reactive. Instead of waiting for things to break and then scrambling to fix them, you learn to anticipate challenges and build solutions right from the start. This mindset is incredibly valuable, whether you are an engineer designing a bridge a doctor planning a surgery, or a student working on a big project. It helps you build quality and safety into everything you do, rather than trying to inspect it in at the end. Using FMEA helps save time, money, and a lot of headaches. Think about the cost of a mistake. Finding and fixing a design flaw on a computer screen is cheap. Finding and fixing that same flaw after you've built a thousand cars is incredibly expensive. It can lead to product recalls, unhappy customers, and a damaged reputation. By investing a little bit of time in FMEA upfront, you can prevent these much bigger problems down the road. It's the classic idea of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but with a structured scientific method to back it up. 
this structured uh, approach also improves communication and teamwork. When a team gets together to perform an FMEA, they share their knowledge and experience. The person from the design team might see a potential problem that the person from the manufacturing team would miss and vice versa. It creates a complete picture of the risks involved. This process documents the team's collective wisdom, creating a valuable record that can be used to train new people and to make um, uh, even better decisions in the future. It ensures everyone is on the same page, working toward the same goal of making things better and safer. So I encourage you to try it. Start small, use FMEA to plan your next road trip or to organize your homework schedule. Ask yourself, what could go wrong and what can I do about it now? You'll find that by thinking ahead, you can make your daily life run more smoothly and your big projects more successful. FMEA gives you a kind of superpower, the power of foresight. It lets you see the future, find the problems hiding there, and build a better, safer, and more reliable world for all of us. Now that's science in action.